Okay, so uh, I'd start, like to start by thanking the organizers, like everyone else, uh, for the excellent job they've done and uh, giving me a chance to speak. And I'm going to tell you about uh, some joint work with Herb Kamowitz. So here's the abstract, which is almost identical to the abstract that you'll seen in the, uh, in the booklet, um, with a couple of minor changes. But, uh, so I'm going to be telling you about various kinds of endomorphisms of, uh, well, commutative Banach algebras, um, sometimes semi-simple, sometimes uniform algebras, um, but more generally, um, commutative Banach algebras in general, and especially semi-prime commutative Banach algebras. Uh, let me promise you that uh, the definitions are coming later. Okay. So, definitions are necessary to follow, um, but what is the sort of definitive result that I've got with Herb on compact endomorphisms, say, of semi-simple commutative Banach algebras, um, and quasi-compact, I was going to say here. Um, the nice thing about this one is it's an if and only if, um, whereas some of the earlier results that, say, Herb got on compact endomorphisms weren't if and only if. This one is a proper characterization of quasi-compact endomorphisms, and it's that, uh, particularly looking at the case where you've got connected <coughs> character space, that's just to make sure there's no non-trivial eigenpotents, um, then your quasi your an algebra endomorphism of your commutative semi-simple Banach algebra is quasi-compact if and only if the powers of the operator actually converge an operator norm to a rank one unital endomorphism. So um, that's pretty strong. Um, and I guess we thought that we'd finished at that point, um, except that when we looked at the proof, um, we discovered that we didn't need semi-simple. Uh, it turned out that what you really needed was that you didn't have any, uh, well, the most important thing you needed was that powers of non-zero elements were non-zero. Um, so you have to do a bit of fiddling, and then it turns out that uh, you can move to commutative semi-prime Banach algebras, um, but the problem there is that, at least if you assume continuum hypothesis, I am assured by Professor Dales that it is possible to have discontinuous endomorphisms of commutative semi-prime Banach algebras. So you actually need to assume continuity before you can get started. But uh, once you've done that, then the theory still goes through, and it actually does work. Um, and then there's a standard procedure you do if your character space isn't connected. I'll tell you something about this, but the standard thing you do if the character space isn't connected involving decomposition into orthogonal idempotents, and, and if I've got time, I'll tell you something about that towards the end. So I'm going to tell you something about this and background, and uh, oh, I'll let myself, let's get my big red arrow. That should help me to point at things. Uh, so, so I'll tell you something about the background and give you some definitions that you're going to need, and, uh, and I might even prove something if you're lucky. Okay, so I think by default, uh, we expect we're talking about complex Banach algebras here, and uh, most of the time I'll be dealing with unit or Banach algebras. And uh, so we've got character space, girl from transform, I'll just remind you of some of the standard stuff. And of course, when I say endomorphism here, I mean an algebra endomorphism, so that's a multiplicative linear map from the algebra to itself. And uh, mostly they'll be unitals, so they're going to map the identity element to the identity element. And if you're semi-simple, then endomorphisms are automatically continuous. I say from the early theory, perhaps, gosh, how long ago was it proved that endomorphisms of commutative... Girl fat. Girl fat. okay. <laughs> so that's early theory. And uh, so then, suppose you are so simple, then uh, you can figure out what endomorphisms look like because they all look like this. They're basically composition operators if you, what you're composing with is a suitable self-map of the maximal ideal space. That self-map is just the restriction of the adjoint 
operator to the character space. Um, but if you're not semi-simple, you still get a self-map in exactly the same way by composing with the <coughs> algebra morphism. And so we get the self-map phi, and that's the self-map associated with T. And, of course, what you get then is this formula <coughs> concerning the Gelfand transforms. Um, so it's still like a composition operator using the Gelfand transform, but, um, of course, the character space might be rather small and the Gelfand transform might be rather trivial. Um, and so you might not expect to get much information back about the endomorphism from the self-map here. In particular, you're not going to expect to get the endomorphism T back by knowing what the, uh, the self-map is. And yet, it still does have applications, as we're going to see um, when we're trying to look at which endomorphism has got which properties. So, of course, uh, endomorphism of a, of a Banach algebra, well, so whatever your objects are, you're going to want to know what the endomorphisms are because that's the basic thing you're going to look at. So, if you're dealing with Banach algebras, you want to know what their endomorphisms are and you want to be able to find them all. And then you want to know which ones have got additional properties. And so, uh, there's a, a long history about this, of this which I'm not going to remotely go into, but I will tell you something about results about compact endomorphisms and then the follow-ups from that. And uh, I'll mention also some of the easy things you can do. So in, in many cases uh, of sort of straightforward algebras, it's completely straightforward to work out exactly what the endomorphisms are and exactly which ones are, say, compact or have got various other properties. Um, so it's sometimes pretty easy. It's pretty easy. It's quite easy for the disk algebra. It's pretty easy for C of X, um, things like that. Uh, but uh, turns out even finding out what the endomorphisms are can be tricky if you move to things like Dell's Davy algebras. Um, I won't I won't say too much about that here. Let me let me uh, I'll I'll tell you in a bit some stuff that is relatively easy and then some of the stuff that's a bit harder. So as I say, there was quite a lot of work on compact endomorphisms and then we start to move to these more general conditions that I've mentioned earlier and some others. And also, you move to wider class of algebras like semi-prime Banach algebras. So I'll just remind you what this means. Um, well, lots of different equivalent definitions of this. Uh, let's go back to blue. Uh, so, and I don't think I need the arrow anymore. So, uh, so what does it mean to say semi-prime? So, A, it's a as the commutative unital Banach algebra, um, A is semi prime. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> it's semi prime if, uh, let's say, no non zero nil put that elements, that will do. Um, but, I mean, you, or you can do it with um, the nil radical, or you can do it with uh, no nil, but an idea, um, you can do it by ideals and so on. But uh, for my purposes, what I need is no non-zero and nil, but an elements. And, uh, oh, so what examples are there? Obviously, uh, semi-simple implies semi-prime, but not conversely. <coughs> In fact, there's quite a lot of commutative radical semi-prime Banach algebras. Mm -hmm. 
like radical, suitable radical banach algebras of power series and things like that. Um, so plenty of examples around where, uh, which are very different from semi-simple. Um, uh, I should say this one, you may want to unitize them if you want to get into the unit setting. Um, but uh, certainly they can be very far from semi-simple. So let me say something about some papers on compact endomorphisms because I want to say uh, stuff that happened a long time before I came into the picture. Um, so we go back to 1978 and then 1980 when Herb Kamowitz did some of the seminal work on compact endomorphisms. Um, so what did Herb do? Uh, well, for a start, he, character he, he said, what are the compact endomorphisms of the disk algebra? So, so here's the closed unit disk. Here's the disk algebra. So that's the continuous functions on the closed unit disk, so that F is analytic on the open disk. Uh, in case you haven't guessed, D is the open disk. And, uh, well, endomorphs from the disk out were pretty easy. You see, you've got this self-map, and you want to know which self maps give you an endomorphism. So T an endomorphism of A of D that corresponds to the self map from the character space, which is of course still the closed disk. So this is a uniform algebra and that's the character space. Um, that's the self map. Um, so that's the associated self map and of course you need V to uh, be actually a map uh, it's got to be a self map but it's also got to be in the disk algebra so So phi itself is continuous on the closed disk and analytic on the interior. Um, and all of those do give you endomorphisms. Um, and so these are the, precisely the ones that do give you endomorphisms as well. And then um, T is compact if and only if, well, if and only if either um, of the closed disk, well, it's got to be, it's, it's either it's constant or it's a compact subset of the, let, let's say, let's put it that way. It's got to be constant or it's got to be a compact subset of the open unit disk. Of the open unit disk. Uh, so, in which case you can say exactly what the um, eigenvalues and eigenvectors are and so on. Um, in this case, uh, the iterates of phi, which I'll call uh, phi n, so that's, uh, that's phi composed with phi composed with dot 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 composed with phi n times, Actually, you can ask whether it's been composed with itself n times or n minus 1 times, um, since there's only n minus 1 compositions in there. Um, but anyway, the nth iterate, uh, phi n, um, have phi n of the closed unit disk, of course. Um, they, 
they converge down to the to one point to a unique fixed point of phi and he also said what the spectrum was and this is a fairly typical result so the spectrum of the actual endomorphism um, is simply naught and one together with all the powers phi prime of, uh, oh, I didn't say what the fixed point was called. Okay, perhaps I should have. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let me redo that. Phi prime of Z naught to the N. Where Z naught is a fixed point. And um, I would say that's a typical spectrum of this type of map result. Um, you get powers of the derivative at the point, and you see that coming back again and again. And if you go up into higher dimensions or even infinite dimensions, you start looking instead at the fresh air derivative and uh, elements of the spectrum of that and, and, and so on. So, it's, uh, so I would say that's a pretty typical spectrum of a compact endomorphism result. Uh, then, in the next paper, he, he sort of generalized this iterates down. So, so then, in the 1980 paper, Kerowitz went uh, the whole hog and proved that if you are, uh, if you've got a compact endomorphism of a commutative semi-simple Banach algebra, then the, it's still true that the self mapped iterates always converge down to a point, a unique fixed point. And this is um, in the case where the maximum ideal space is connected. So, um, so that, uh, let's say, A is uh, what I call a Banach function algebra on its character space. That's just a commutative semi simple Banach algebra, um, and we'll assume it's unital. Um, and T from A to A is a compact endomorphism with, asso with associated self map phi then the iterates Phi n again, uh, phi n of phi a again converge down to a unique fixed point of phi. And uh, have I said it? Was, did I say it was connected? I think I didn't. So that works for all um, commutative unit or semi-simple Banach algebras. All Banach function algebras dealt with there. Um, in the case where you're not connected, then the intersection of the images is a finite set instead. And you get sort of attracting fixed cycles and, and things like that. Okay. So, uh, then Klein generalized this significantly in 
Um, but only in the case of uniform algebras. So what Klein did was he proved that um, in the first setting with a connected Maxwell deal space for uniform algebras, what happened was he actually showed that the operators, the powers of the operators converge to a rank one endomorphism in operator norm, which is one of the things I was already mentioning earlier. So Klein got that result. Um, so he looked at the convergence of uh, T to the N to a rank one endomorphism. Uh, which wasn't there in the Kawith paper, and uh, it's got the very nice neat proofs that only work in the uniform algebra setting. As far as I can tell, most of them don't go through. No, let's move on because it's taken me longer than I thought. So let me not take too long over this definition then. What's the essential spectral radius? Um, you're probably familiar with the calculated algebra, so you take the bad operators, quotient by the compact operators, and then you can take the spectral radius in there, and you get the essential spectral radius. And uh, Reese operator means your essential spectral radius is zero, while quasi-compact means, for us, essential spectral radius less than one. That's not the only definition of quasi-compact around, um, but um, uh, there are more, there's more than one definition of quasi-compact around. They usually coincide for endomorphisms, um, but uh, since some people say that that's the same as power compact, I don't mean that kind. Um, power compact is something different, and uh, so um, what you get is compact implies power compact implies Reese implies quasi-compact, but uh, Converses are false, even for uniform algebras, and uh, I'm not going to have time to show you those examples here. Um, so let me just move on to tell you what are the results we've got then um, on the, in a completely general setting. Um, so you've got your associated self map and so on then. So here's the one I mentioned earlier. You're quite a compact if and only if the operators T to the end, they converge in operating norm to a rank one unital endomorphism. And the rank one uniform endomorphism, of course, that corresponds to the unique fixed point of your self map. And, uh, and then it works again because what you really, the most important thing you needed was the powers of uh, eigenvalues were still eigenvalues. Um, so, uh, and a few other little fiddly tricks, and then you find it works for commutative semi-prime Banach algebras as well, as long as the catch space is connected. If the catch space isn't connected, then here's what you do. Um, you use a standard decomposition into idempotence trick that I'm not going to have time to tell you, um, unless you want to see it. And, uh, and then again, you get the finitely many attracting fixed cycles that Klein got in his uh, big thesis. Um, and which is reflected when you look at the operator um, by saying there's some power of the operator whose powers converge. So it's a, a very nice subsequence of the powers, which corresponds to these attracting fixed cycles. Um, and these t to the k ends as k vary convergent operating onto a finite rank endomorphism. And uh, that generalizes this earlier work. And I just wanted to flash past a few questions. Sorry if I've gone a couple of minutes over. But uh, here are lots of things you can do. You can find the endomorphisms, the compact endomorphisms, the quasi-compact endomorphisms. Quite a few people are, are doing this now, including one of my research students. Um, then you can look at semi-prime Banach algebras. Um, these are completely open-ended things because there's no, there's no end to the algebras you can look at, the classes of operators you can look at, uh, and so on. So you can do as much or as little of this as you want. Um, Finding the spectra, if you don't assume quite strong conditions on the operator, seems to be a bit hard. Um, finding the spectra of a general endomorphism, I think, is a bit of a tough order, but maybe the experts on operator theory can do that. Um, and then, um, I won't have time to tell you much about these other ones, but uh, you can tell me which class of operators you think 
we should look at next, um, and uh, whether there's non-commutative versions of all this stuff. But I think I should stop there. Do we have a question? I think not. Thank you very much, Joel. Please stay seated for a moment.